Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them out to bite-sized pieces. So today I just want to talk about real quick about what's going on in the market and how things are pretty easily uh, manipulated to make it appear one way when in actuality uh, there's a, a, a total flip side of what's going on. So first up, we want to talk about uh, what I call the magician, uh, Guggenheim Scott Menard. Uh, doesn't see any reason to own Bitcoin right now. And he's going to give him uh, his actual case, which is kind of odd because he's the same one that said that Bitcoin was going to 400,000. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, Elizabeth Warren, Senator Warren, as she calls for regulation by July 28th. And uh, we'll see just how uh, kind of ridiculous that actually is. And then we want to take a look at what is going on and then take a middle ground and then to some more positive things. So uh, this one, Bitcoin Grayscale's unlock shouldn't impact spot prices in theory, but we're going to take a look at why this is actually about Bitcoin, not uh, actually shares and not about uh, the actual physical Bitcoin that's being sold. And it's just about shares. It really shouldn't matter. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with uh, Visa and 50 crypto platforms to enable crypto payments at 70 million merchants. Again, let's take a look at the big picture. And finally, uh, big news that Microsoft is using Bitcoin to let people own and protect their decentralized virtual identity. So we'll dive into all those things and we'll do it as quickly as possible. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is the uh, 9th, uh, 3 p.m. Texas time. And it looks like... Uh, we're just stagnant. We're at 1.39 trillion. Bitcoin's at 33,500. There's really not too much to see here. It's going to go sideways. Unfortunately, uh, I think there's going to be some turbulent times ahead. But again, we need to take a look at the big picture and we need to take a look at uh, who is orchestrating all these different things. And here is just one example. So uh, I call Scott uh, the magician because uh, he is really good at uh, whatever he, it is that he does as far as like spreading out uh, information and kind of moving markets a little bit in certain ways. So uh, this was an article just published today and uh, this was in a July 9th interview today with CNBC's Brian Sullivan. Sullivan and Scott Menard, uh, the CIO at Guggenheim Partners Global. And just so you know, Guggenheim, they've got like trillions of asset center management. Uh, they're a pretty big company and uh, it's just interesting to see uh, again, what these people are talking about as far as where the market goes. And he said that there's no reason to own Bitcoin at the moment. And he states, look at where we are. I really do believe this is probably a crash. And a crash would mean we'd be down 70 to 80 percent. Let's just say it's, and he's talking about Bitcoin, goes between 10,000 and 15,000. And he's calling essentially for Bitcoin to go down to $10,000, which seems a little bit ridiculous, but uh, whatever. And he says, if you're gonna be a speculator, speculate that it's heading lo lower. And uh, Menard uh, has an opinion that 10,000 Bitcoin's ultimate bottom and his comments, and this his comments came just days after the cryptocurrency plunged to a five month low of 28,600 but managed to swiftly recover. So here's the thing. Scott came out and said, yes, we're going to $10,000. And he kind of like he plays on this fear of what is going on in the market. Like it's going to go down, it's going to go down. And we see it, you know, really go down. And he's like, see, I told you. And then of course it recovers. And let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about where I think things are going. And it's kind of odd because again, he's, he's the magician. He kind of gets out there and pretty much just talks about like, these are where uh, we think things are going, which is very odd because not too long ago, uh, just about six months ago, December, 2020, he went on TV and said that, hey, uh, from what our analysts say, uh, Bitcoin right now uh, should be worth $400,000. And I think, I don't know if Scott got in trouble uh, as, as the CIO, the chief investment officer, but they're like, hey, genius we would like to buy more of these things uh called bitcoin so if you could tell not tell people that it should really be four hundred thousand, that would be fantastic and then all of a sudden you see a total role reversal and then here we are and we're like oh well that is uh not what it is it's actually ten thousand dollars so again on this channel this is just investment opinion not investment advice but it is weird how these different types of uh, people are i'm not going to say they're trying to pull things back but it's odd how they just kind of like, first they come out and say uh, one thing and then they're like, well, wait, we shouldn't do that. Let's pull this train back. Maybe we can invest a little bit and then bring things a little bit forward. 
And really all you gotta do is not just look at one person, just look at uh, everything that's going on in the market. And that will bring me to my next point when we talk about uh, Elizabeth Warren and regulation. So this was an article that just came out uh, yesterday and Senator Warren uh, is urging uh, SEC Chair Gary Gensler that uh, she needs regulation by July 28th. And I think this is just a, a call to arms of uh, what to do. Do we think that Gensler is going to jump and go, yes, ma'am, let's make sure that we get uh, everything put into place and we can uh, maybe just make sure that uh, all these cryptocurrencies are classified as either a security, a commodity, or actual, uh, or just a, just a currency itself, and we'll do it all uh, within two weeks, no problem. Don't worry about that XRP uh, case that we've got going. We'll just trudge over that as well, and we'll get it all done for you, Senator, no problem. Are you out of your mind? That was sarcasm. So this is essentially what happened. She just, the Senator, uh, Warren, who chairs the Senate Banking Committee's Subcommittee on Economic Policy. And uh, if you take a look at who her big donors are, surprise, surprise, it's banks, uh, said in a letter to SEC Chair Gary Gensel that she needs answers by July 28th. Despite the rising popularity of crypto, a lack of common sense regulation has left ordinary investors at the mercy of manipulators and fraudsters. So there's two comments here. And the one I think is just just ridiculous to think that's actually going to happen by July 28th. I think there's probably some answers or maybe just like some directions of where they're going, uh, but they're not going to have regulation uh, in this time. So I know people are kind of flipping out going, this is awful. They're going to have regulation. They're going to shut everything down. That's not happening. It's not happening. But the second part here uh, is true. And I agree with her. Despite the rising popular crypt of crypto, a lack of common sense regulation has left ordinary investors at the mercy of manipulators and fraudsters. Look, here's the problem. We need some clarity. We need to know exactly what these cryptocurrencies are. Are they a security? Are they a commodity? Or are they a currency? We need to have them classified and just go from there. I had a great talk uh, with uh, Simon from uh, StormX or Simon Yu. And we were talking on Alex Mascioli's show. And he said, you know, in, in Korea, they have a pretty well uh, laid out and they have their own committee and that committee's re sole responsibility is to determine if cryptocurrencies are a commodity, which in the United States would be, it would fall under the, under the CFTC. If they are a security, which would be under the SEC, or if they are a currency and that would fall under the IRS. And uh, you could just di differentiate that. And then of course, if you have clarity, then the businesses know exactly where to go and how to build things and everything else. So I think that is a is actually a good plan. I know people are, are screaming at the at the uh, screen, but uh, that is how I see things. A little regulation, I think, goes a long way. Of course, people will say, well, you don't understand because they're gonna overregulate things. Look, if we don't get this right now uh, and people keep getting screwed over because you're gonna see this time and time again, and, and essentially what is going on uh, with <laughs> With the unregulated activities and uh, people getting uh, pretty much uh, over over leveraged and uh, different things that are, are happening to them just losing money left and right, uh, there's going to come a time when it's going to happen anyhow. So let's just get this over with so we can get to the next point. And I think uh, that is exactly what needs to happen, which essentially will lead me to uh, our next part, which we know that things are that regulation, people get scared about that. And then of course they start to go, oh, you know, maybe I should sell. But this next piece is also uh, kind of making people sell and, and it really shouldn't. And that is uh, the grayscale uh, unlock period. So real quick, uh, this just came out, uh, what, two or three days ago. And the unlock period, just so you know, Grayscale, uh, they have their own fund. It's kind of like an ETF, but not an ETF, and allows people uh, who do not really like to deal with exchanges and custody and holding all their other crypto to actually get involved in cryptocurrency in a trust. And starting from the 13th, the biggest unlocks of the year will be happening over a two month period uh, with 16,240 Bitcoin scheduled for unlock on the 18th of July. So when people hear that, like, oh man, they're gonna unlock it and then people are gonna sell uh, their Bitcoin. But you have to understand, these are just shares of Bitcoin. It's paper Bitcoin. It's not the actual Bitcoin. Grayscale never sells their Bitcoin whatsoever. So when people start to talk about this, 
it's it's not like it's going to sell off. So JP Morgan jumps in. And of course, here's another one of uh, the people who are trying to, you know, I, they know what's going on, but they try to manipulate it. Told its clients recently that the world's largest cryptocurrency might fall to 25,000 on the charts thanks to the aforementioned unlocks. This has no effect on Bitcoin itself. The Bitcoin and the trust does not trade, only the shares trade. Moreover, since most buyers of uh, GBDC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, were doing it for the R back when Grayscale Bitcoin was trading at a premium, they were also shorting Bitcoin because that's exactly what they do. And then to finish this up, in theory, uh, this uh, Grayscale Bitcoin release should have no market impact on spot prices because they're not selling the actual uh, Bitcoin, just the shares. But this market, like all markets, is massively manipulated and the product is too complex for most investors. So it allows the manipulators, all the people we just talked about, to prey on you, JP Morgan, Scott Menard, by spreading misinformation. And that's just one of those things. So of course, now here we are and people are getting scared. They hear about this unlock, everything's gonna be sold. It's going to 10,000, oh, the sky is falling. And that is a problem. But you have to, again, look at the big picture. And that's which leads me into the next point. So just take a look at everything that's going on around us. Has there been a, a change in effect as, as far as like the, the Bitcoin network? Has there been a hack? Has there been a double spend? Has somebody come out as like Vladimir Putin said, hey, I'm the creator. It's not Satoshi Nakamoto. No, it's all the same thing. And really, it all just comes down to news and how people play the market. But just look at where we are moving as far as in direction. So this just came out uh, 18 hours ago, Visa and 50 crypto platforms to enable uh, payments at 70 merchants. So Visa announced Wednesday that the transactions via crypto linked Visa cards, all the, and there's more coming, exceeded 1 billion in the first quarter. Further said that it's partnering with 50 major crypto platforms to launch card programs to be able to spend and buy. So this was a tweet, and eh, let me blow this up. And it says, with more than a billion spent on crypto link Visa, Visa is partnering with 50 of the leading platforms to launch card programs that make it easy to convert and spend digital currency at 70 million merchants worldwide. So that's nice. You know, uh, Visa, the largest uh, payment processor in the world is getting together with cryptocurrency. Go, you know what, let's do more of that. So Visa CFO Vasant Prabhu said, uh, I think I nailed that, said, uh, we see a lot of volume on our network of people buying crypto at these various regulated exchanges. And as far as we can see, that trend continues. He further goes on to state, we are doing a lot to create an ecosystem that makes crypto more usable and more like any other currency. People are exploring ways in which they can use crypto for things they would use normally currencies for. So again, not going anywhere, only accelerating. Crypto platforms that Viso is working with uh, include Coinbase, BlockFi, Circle, and FTX. Program is focused on part of making crypto more practical. And the partnerships will make it easier for clients to convert and spend crypto. And among the features being worked on is letting users spend fiat and earn cryptocurrencies as rewards. So uh, that sounds pretty good. You can actually spend your crypto and you get uh, cash back or crypto back. And then to finish up, the merchants don't have to change anything. It will be the same as any other Visa transaction to them. But on the back end, the crypto assets are instantly converted into fiat. And just one more uh, on-ramp or off-ramp or however you want to say it uh, for crypto to actually be uh, utilized as far as uh, a mass adoption. So those are the good parts. And then the last one, and I think this is one of the biggest things that uh, I think is very interesting is Microsoft who's getting into the game and they see crypto. So what's going on here? So Microsoft is using Bitcoin to let people own and protect their decentralized virtual identity or DID, decentralized IDs. This was the article that shares how the global, global IT is building a project. This is by Michael Saylor for MicroStrategy. So here's what they're doing. I'm not going to read this. this. It gets boring. This is in the, net, in the first 20 seconds of this 22 minute video. This is, uh, this is what is summed up. Let me just play this, make it very simple about what's going on. 
In an age of increasingly ubiquitous government surveillance, security breaches, and high-profile cancellations in which internet giants have ultimate control over users' online profiles and data, Microsoft is helping to build a technology that would give individuals ownership rights over their own virtual identities. The mission of the ION project is to build decentralized identifiers, or DIDs, that can serve as the anchor point for all our activities across the internet. Great. That's all I want to know. So look, if we take a look at what's going on, I mean, not just as far as like, like DIDs and not just as far as like, like Visa, but also take a look at the, the big banks that are getting into this. We've covered this story before. I'm just going to just brief over it. BNY Mellon, the oldest bank and with uh, a huge amounts of assets under management, uh, is to offer Bitcoin services, uh, financial systems, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Bitcoin, other uh, great stuff. Great. So then also State Street Bank, uh, again, one of the older ones, trillions of assets under management, launches a cryptocurrency division. And then you've also got the 6 billion uh, NCR payment processing, opens Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions because these banks are sick and tired of seeing your money that they actually have in their banks go to the exchanges. And like, we want a piece of this because it, it hasn't stopped like we thought it would. It's actually accelerating. So we need to get in this game sooner than later. So all these things that are going on with Scott Menard and all the people that are, and JP Morgan and all the people that are, that are coming in and it's going, you know what, uh, this is what we want to do. Let's bring this back because they, they see the writing on the wall. And uh, this is just how I see things. And you also have to remember one more thing, is that Scott here, is he talking about, and JP Morgan, all, all these different places, are they talking about how you should uh, not have it now? And then, you know, just kind of just pull back a little bit. But in the long grand scheme of things, um, I think we see where things are going. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But uh, looks, uh, looks pretty positive. Now, having said all that, lastly, I will just say this last piece. And that is that for this month of July, all these things that are happening and all the different information that we put out here on this channel and other channels that do the, do the good work, July is going to be a bad month. I'm just going to let you know right now. I don't see how we don't dip a little bit further, especially with what's, what's going on and just the, the avalanche of negative uh, news. I, I've never thought that July was going to be a, a good month. I thought we were going to actually retract. I saw a Bitcoin price of around 28, 26 to 28 K. And then I saw in August, September and October fireworks. And I've said, I think I said like every single video now. So let's see if I'm right. Could be wrong. And that's it. So look, uh, if you made it to the very end, first of all, thanks. There was a lot of stuff to go over. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, a like. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive on this channel, like the stories we just talked about. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.